je vous vois. C'est beaucoup trop cher. À l'époque où l'Allemand avait envie de faire cette statue, il n'y avait pas de problème. Non, mais moi, c'est. Dans les serpents. Non, dans le fond. 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 C'est quoi, je monte pas dedans. Oui. Vous continuez. Donc, je vous dis que. Voilà, mais je pense. Je pense que je suis pas sûr. 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 Je suis Dans les serpents. Non, dans, dans, le, dans le fond des de C'est quoi, je monte pas dedans. Oui. Vous pas de radio, non <rire> Vous continuez. Donc je vous dis que. Je suis pas sûr. 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 Je suis Hey, it's Tim with the University of Vinyl. Thanks again for stopping by, everyone. Today, um, I guess it could be a humble brag. I've, I've often talked about the importance of visiting your regular record shops, those physical brick-and-mortar shops, on a weekly basis. Uh, because you just never know what you're going to find. If that shop has a new arrivals bin, that's where I will go. I'll make a beeline for that new arrivals bin and check check it out. Uh, pet peeve, record shops who don't have new arrivals bins. WTF. There's no grand thesis in today's uh, video. This is just kind of a relaxed show and tell. And I want to I want to prove the fact that you could still find near mint first pressings of iconic albums that you need to have in your collection if you make it a habit to go to physical record shops and see what could be coming in. You never know until you're there. Uh, now, I love the Instagram flip video phenomenon as much as anyone, but for me, the real thrill is just kind of showing up. Maybe it's a Saturday morning, maybe it's a Friday afternoon, because that's when the shops will tend to uh, put out things that they've bought over the previous week or two, and they've had ch a chance to grade them and maybe clean them and price them. I'm filming this on Sunday. It is minus two degrees, but I am warm and cozy. Uh, I'm kind of I've got a certain glow to myself right now because of the, the two near mint records that I found on consecutive days within 10 minutes of going to these two different record shops here locally. And then of course we've got the first home game, uh, the first Detroit Lions home playoff game ever, I think. I think that's a fact. Uh, the Lions versus the Rams later this evening. I will be watching. Wish us luck, everyone. Friday afternoon. I'm at a small local shop that also sells vintage bric-a-brac, but they do have 
a very nice deep selection of used records that are reasonably priced and typically in great condition. Lo and behold, in the stacks, I find an original pressing of the 1970 swan song from Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. A nice crisp spine. The most exciting thing about this was, oh yeah, original inner sleeve. If you've watched my videos, I've talked about this particular record many times. It's near and dear to my heart. My parents had a very compact uh, stereo system when I was growing up. It was in the living room. There was a modest stack of records, and Bridge Over Troubled Water is something that I still have memories today of uh, putting that record on a turntable and just kind of being enthralled with the sound of that record. It's a great sounding record for the most part. There is a little bit of a sibilance, there's a little bit of distortion on the title track. And it's, you know, if you are interested in that album, you probably already know that. There has been a lot of reissues through the years. I have a 200 gram classic records cut. They also did a single-sided 45 RPM cut that I have yet to see or hear, and I'm not sure that I will go out and get that. Imagine my surprise when I found this record, and it is in, look, look at the gloss on this thing. Look at the luster. This is in near mint condition. There is no surface noise. There is breathtaking sound quality on this. Yes, I could still hear a little bit of that distortion and sibilance on Bridge Over Troubled Water. But if you listen to the songs on side two, The Boxer, Baby Driver, and Only Living Boy in New York, which get, gets me every time, the amazing work, the vocal work from, from Art Garfunkel on that song, and throughout this album, some of his finest work. Um, I'm a big Art Garfunkel fan. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, a near mint example. Uh, for under $30 is the price that I found this for. Um, this could be, this could be my penultimate copy. Original pressings, think about it. There are only going to be so many original pressings and you're only going to find those here 50 years later how many of those are you going to find in the condition that i found this i'm going to hazard a guess and say not very many but you don't know until you go look so i guess that's kind of the motto of today's video but uh super happy with this one Late yesterday afternoon, I just finished doing kind of the weekly uh, grocery shopping 
with my wife. She had to go to another appointment and I decided to go pop into another one of my favorite record shops here locally. Just, you know, late afternoon. It was getting very, very cold and I wanted to get home, but I thought, you know what? Let's just, let's just pop in and see what's happening here. They have a very large new arrivals bin and it had been Oh man, coming up on maybe two weeks that I, I hadn't had time to get down into this shop. Lo and behold, I find another incredibly clean 1969 Columbia 2i. Early stamper numbers on this one. Um, I mean... <laughs> This is probably the, the cleanest original cover that I have found out in the wild. Uh, again, this thing can be riddled with, uh, with ring wear. I mean, look at how crisp the Johnny Cash signature is. This is a special record to me as well because I fell in love with uh, some of these songs. Um, you know, in the mid-19 to late 1970s, I grew up in a small town. There was like two FM radio channels playing classic rock. And Lay Lady Lay was a staple. I, uh, I heard that song so much. But for me, this record is all about two incredible songs, To Be Alone With You, the one where you hear Bob uh, asking Bob Johnston if the tape is rolling. The incredible Jerry Lee Lewis-ish piano line that Bob Wilson lays down on that track. And just the undeniable, undeniable groove that you have on To Be Alone With You. It's an exhilarating listen. Yeah, it you know this pressing it sounds like you're in the room basically and I know in fact I think it's available again I think they've done a, a repressing there's a double 45 mobile fidelity uh, pressing that's available for $60 I'm sure it's a great experience uh, I have several of those Dylan MoFi titles they are amazing but, you know, finding this yesterday in OG, uh, in near mint condition, I'm, you know, I'm just good. I'm good now. Um, the other song, or other songs. Um, Tonight I'll be staying here with you. Amazing. You know, the, the feel of this record is a group of guys in a studio Tape was rolling for an unlimited period, apparently. That's the way that they did it when Bob was going to put something down. They hit record. Uh, and then, not until the last cigarette, the last cup of coffee, and everybody was uh, leaving the room, did they hit the button again to turn the recording off. They didn't want to miss anything. One thing is for sure with this album, it doesn't require... A lot of uh, examination and, you know, reading the lyrics. This is just a hangout record. There's a vibe to it. Uh, this isn't blonde on blonde. It's not blood on the tracks. It's a casual hang. It's a great listen. You could put this on. I could put this on uh, any day of the week, any time. There's less than 30 minutes of music on this record. And, you know, breaking that up on a 45 RPM, uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not digging that idea. So, again, I think I'm good with this. That is today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Please, if you liked today's video or any of the others that I've been putting out, Please consider subscribing, like the video, uh, let me know what you think about original pressings. Are you an original pressing person or do you? would you rather have a, a guaranteed clean 
reissue uh, with Fantastic Sound? Or are you of the feeling that you can get Fantastic Sound if you can find a clean original out there in the wild? Do you like the thrill of the chase? Let me know. Take care, everybody.